the, the fly that we're going to try to do today uh, is, is something I call a rattle bunker. Uh, a bunker imitation that makes noise because it, it's got a rattle built into it. Uh, and the, the first time I tried something like this, I was fishing in, in a shallow bay in Rhode Island with a guide about whom I was writing a story. And um, what, what transpired was that uh, he told me that rattleflies attracted bluefish. We were in about eight feet of water. It was a mud bottom. We were way back away from the main channel. And I thought that the odds of catching any bluefish at all were pretty remote. Um, and, and he agreed that they were pretty remote until on the third cast I caught a bluefish. <laughs> it, was, um, it was enlightening to say the least. Since then I found that they catch stripers just fine. Um, but if there are bluefish present you can expect that they will show up and eat these things uh, with great relish. And they seem to uh, really like them. What I have for a hook here uh, is a is a 60 degree jig hook. Uh, in other words, this bend is 60 degrees upward, and uh, the jig hook is an upside down uh, type of design, so that it can be fished deep or shallow or anywhere you want to retrieve it, but can be dragged across the bottom literally without hanging up. Nice thing. We're going to use a monofil fine monofilament thread and wrap the entire hook shank the flat of the shank with thread just to provide a, a, a base for tying things in place. And I found working with these jig hooks uh, it's really nice to have a rotary vise because the rotary vise allows you to do things like turn it sideways so that you can wrap much more easily at an angle and avoid the point of the hook with your thread especially since it's above and is very likely to cause you no end of grief. And I bring the thread back to the middle of the hook shank. Yeah, in this bag. I have a small glass rattle available in pretty much any place that sells fishing tackle, particularly places that specialize in bass fishing. And I put it in place on the bottom of the shank, about in the middle, with a point, which is where they sealed this thing, facing forward. So that it sort of looks like that. Then I wrap over the glass and you can't really wrap down beyond the point because it will slip right off. And you notice I can do the same again. Tilt the vise and it allows me to work back and do a really good job of getting a lot of thread in place to bind that thing down. Then make sure then it's centered nicely underneath. Then I take my UV finish, in this case UV nail polish, and I put a nice hefty coat of it right over that thread that I use to wrap everything in place. And take my light and cure that. Uh, again, about 20 seconds, because I put a lot on there. If you get little drips, don't worry about it. We're going to cover everything that's here. That's pretty secure. I have some easy body. This is a medium size and this is a pearl finish. I have a small piece of it here that I can slip nicely right over the hook shank like that and extend back a 
well enough so that I can wrap it and catch it. And then again, turn that sideways and wrap all of the tips of that material oops, nice and firmly down against the shank. Because the shank is swept upwards, having this tipped sideways really makes it easy. And that's what happens if you miss. See, right around the tip of the hook. Now, I made this long enough so that I can push it back like that when I want to wrap that front piece in place. And I can just go loosely around the outside because I'm going to cover this with, with varnish um, and it's not going to affect whether that's there or not. And I can easily take my thread and catch that bit and then make sure again that everything is on the bottom where I want it. And then tip this again and holding that down in place just wrap nice and firmly and that will ensure that all of this stays back here and forms a nice belly shape for your baitfish imitation. And I wrap it securely so that it can't ever slide up around the eye of the hook. Quickly tie it off and then take regular head cement or nail polish whatever you wish to call it since it's all lacquer and give it a nice coat. And with this first coat, which is fairly thin, so it will dry quickly, all I'm doing is making sure that nothing unravels while I'm doing the rest of the work. So now I have a body that's shaped, it's still fairly flexible, the rattle is inside, and I'm going to coat it thoroughly with my UV varnish. And you may see some drips forming. Don't worry about it. You notice I'm not coating the part that's wrapped against the shank in the front as yet. It will come later. But I am covering the piece in the back. And we're sort of sealing this easy body material with a complete coat of the UV varnish. And by rotating this slightly as I'm going, I keep it nice and smooth and I can put the light on it and for another 20 seconds or so piece of bucktail that I didn't expect to come floating through the room. Um, I can just get a nice smooth coating. Anytime you're using materials like this, the ability to rotate the vise is a great help in making this really smooth. And then to avoid any stickiness, as I've done with other flies. Give it a nice thorough coating, again uh, avoiding this part of the fly. 
we're going to tie more things on there. Nice thorough coating of head cement, which will keep anything from getting tacky. This is a time-consuming fly in most normal circumstances because this takes a while to dry. So you can sit here and rotate it for a little bit until you're sure that it's tacky enough so that it's not going to run or drip. It doesn't take very long to do that. And then done with that step, you can just remove this from the vise and set it aside to dry while you prepare others. To make our tying simpler, I made one of these earlier, which is already dry, so I can just swap it out. This is what you do making bunches of these things, whether commercially or for yourself. You just make a bunch of them to this stage, let them dry, and then come back to them the next day, really. Now I can reattach my thread up here in the front. It's really a very simple fly to tie. You look at what goes into it. And then I, I'm going to use some DNA. Um, start with a pretty pretty good bunch, about like that, half the thickness of a pencil when you pull it tight. Cut it off, wrap it around the tying thread, and then pull it into place. few wraps to hold it in position and you can untwist it and put half on each side of the hook shank very easily so that it's evenly distributed. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of how much do I put where. Once that's done, a couple of quick wraps right over the top and it holds it in place. In this case I'm going to use three colors. I've already used what they call hollow chromosome flash which is just a pure flash. I'm going to use iron blue which is a bluish tint. Same amount. Tied in exactly the same way. bit of moisture. Saliva is just wonderful for that. To keep everything so you can see what you're doing out of your way. And then black. Again, fairly equivalent amount. I've tied these with multiple colors including pinks and yellows and all the other things that you normally find in Bunker. Um, but I found that these three colors seem to do the job as well as anything and it's a whole lot less work.
and then form a nice head with your tying thread to hold everything in place. So, you have a belly and then a tapered body certainly pretty representative of a bunker tie it off Got the tying thread. I take the time to stroke all this stuff back. Um, I'm going to apply a little bit of head cement, not only to the thread wraps, but also to the sides where I'm going to place some eyes. Having prepared a little bit, I can then pull all of this back as that sets up a bit. And give it its final shape. And using eyes five, about five thirty seconds epoxy eyes any color works really darker ones show up a little better And place them on the sides. I find that it works a little better doing them one at a time. Putting a coat of UV varnish over the eye and completely around it. and putting it in place firmly with my light. This way, the eye, this eye is not going to move as I place the other one. I turn it over. and place the second eye. Again, lots of UV varnish around the eye. and over it. I'll 
just hold that right there as I harden that. Then coat over the top of the head. Underneath, in other words, all the way around the head. This also gives a little bit of finished shape. Holds all of the DNA in place. And by rotating like this, you can see if you've actually missed any spots. And then like we do with everything else, to avoid the tackiness and stickiness of these UV varnish products, a nice coat of head cement. Which not only covers all that sticky stuff when it dries, but it brightens the UV varnish up which becomes dull as as you set it. You know? um, it basically finishes the fly. I wanted you to see what it looks like after a dozen bluefish have attacked and chopped it up. Um, I did destroy the rattle with pliers trying to take the, the fly out of the, the fish's mouths um, but it's still fishable a bit shorter than it used to be uh, and the color has kind of gone away that's because it's crushed but other than that this fly will still catch fish a dozen bluefish down the road and yes I did use wire thank you enjoy